Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 107 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Amy Logan, author of the book A Girl with a Cape, the true story about the superhero in all of us. The book introduces a little girl who wears a leopard print scarf, which comes with the book, as a superhero cape in hopes to do something big to make the world a better place. What she doesn't realize is that her everyday kindnesses are already doing that. Amy Logan is the author of the book series, A Girl with a Cape, and the founder of the Kindness Gala Foundation, an organization that highlights and supports other local nonprofit groups whose sole mission it is to give back to those in our communities. Again, her book is called A Girl with a Cape, the true story about the superhero in all of us. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 107. So, Amy, it's such a pleasure to have you here as a guest today. My first question for you is this. What inspired you to write and publish your book? Well, Lena, first of all, let me say thank you for um, for having me on your program. I was I have always been a writer, and I love poetry. I love children's book. I love that the message of um, children's book are so simple that um, anybody can, you know, understand them. I, I was tired of people feeling less than and not feeling good enough. Um, so I just sat down one day and I just started typing and I thought, you know what, I've got this idea for, um, for a book and here we are. <laughs> I love it. Um, so what, what inspired you to, to um, or, or let's start here first. Tell me a little bit more about the, the significance of the cape. Okay. Well, all little kids, when um, they like to play superhero, they'll grab um, a pillowcase, a towel, a scarf or something and put it around their neck like a superhero cape. And cape, in my head, along, or to go along with this book, cape, C-A-P-E, stands for create a positive environment because that's what superheroes do, right? They make the world a better place. And I started thinking, well, gosh, I know a lot of kids who do good things to make the world a better place. And I know a lot of grownups who do good things to make the world a better place. So why don't we view ourselves as super? Because really that's, that's what we are. And there's, there's validation in that. And then I started thinking, I also know some kids and some adults who I think are pretty super, but they don't feel very super at all. And then I got really bummed out because I started thinking, I know some kids and even some adults who on purpose make other people feel not super. And um, so I decided I, we don't need any more of that. We don't need any more negativity. Everybody should be wearing their capes. Everybody should be reminded that, you know, we're born with invisible capes, uh, that we have the power to make the world a better place. I love it. I love it. So what what is it that drives you to want to share that message with your readers and your audience and and ultimately like every single person on earth? Like where why are you hoping to inspire people to make the world a better place? Why why change for the better? Why spread this positive energy? Well, I think because for a long time I myself never felt good enough. And I think in today's world, you turn on the TV or you walk through a grocery store and you see the tabloids and the magazines and, and everybody's supposed to look this way, dress this way, drive this car, you know, carry this purse or, you know, unless you're rich enough or super rich or super famous, you don't have the power to have an impact. So I think as a society, kids are being raised feeling just the the pressure of not being good enough and adults as well. Um, we play this constant comparison game um, and I was, I was feeling it too. And I thought, you know, why, why am I feeling so bad about myself? What makes that person better than that person, better than that person? Um, and I think some of it too, <laughs> when I turned 40, I, I think, well, and that's when I wrote this book is when I, the year I turned 40, actually the same month. So I think it was a little bit of a mental breakdown going, why? What's my purpose? And 
I realized, gosh, for a long time, I struggled with depression. And it took me a long time to realize that I affect other people and that I have an impact and I have a place in this world. And if I can get more people to realize that they have a place in this world, um, you know, the better. And we don't always see the impact that we have, right? I could see somebody out at at a store and I could go up to them and say, oh my gosh, I love that outfit. So for me, I'm just thinking, where did, where did she get it? Will it look appropriate on me? You know, I'm in my forties. And, and so giving her that compliment, it was no big deal. But what I don't know is her backstory. What I don't know is that maybe she's been in an abusive relationship and she's never been told she looked pretty a day in her life, you know? So if I can get more people to realize that everything they do and say, and it's a choice, but everything they do and say matters, it it has an impact. Where do you think, like, where do you think that disconnect starts in life? Like, where do we go from being, you know, the, the open hearted, fun loving children to, to becoming adults that forget that forget our power, forget our abilities to spread kindness, spread, you know, spread that positive energy? Um, That's a really great question. And I wish I had a really great answer for you. But um, I don't I have no idea. I I think media plays a huge role in that. Um, I don't necessarily think it has every it's the sole reason behind all of it. But I think media has a big has a big role in it and social media now, you know, it's not like when I was younger and, um, you know, we didn't have access. There was no Facebook, there was no Instagram or Twitter. And, and I think social media adds to people feeling validated by the number of likes that they get or the number of followers that they get. And um, it's a whole new playing field now for people to feel validated and work something and, to try and reteach everybody that it, that's not where it comes from. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you made some good points. I, I, I agree with that. I think media definitely has a, has a huge influence there. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Uh, not, not that, that it's happening, but right. <laughs> it, I mean, it, that, it's cool that you, you see that too. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, so when it comes to um, the audience for your book, is it just for little girls? Is that who you wrote your book for? No, it's, you know, it's not. Um, it is for anybody that needs the reminder that they were born because the world knew they would make a difference. I go and do empowerment assemblies at schools, and that's one of the first things that people ask. Well, is it about a girl, but is it appropriate for boys? Absolutely. And sometimes boys are the first ones to put that cape on because they think it's cool. Um, And I also chose not to name the character because she could be anybody. So that's why she doesn't have a name. Um, But the book is also, I have a lot of people that get this book for their older kids going off to college or um, a girlfriend who's going through a rough time. I've even have had a couple of men purchase the book for their wives to let their wives know that um, that's how they view their wife is the superhero of their family. It, that was pretty cool. So it, it really just isn't for kids. It's for anybody that needs that reminder. And the fact that it comes with a really cool cape, which is not a kid's cape, it's an actual uh, leopard print scarf. That's pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, it's really clever. I love it. I love the whole concept and I love the, the energy that goes along with the yeah. book and the work that you do. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the the process of putting this book together. What, um, you know, a lot of people, I feel a, a lot of my clients struggle with the idea of, you know, they want to do a children's book, but they, they get, a, they have fears around the process of finding an illustrator or hiring an illustrator. So um, for the benefit of those listeners right now who, are, who want to learn a little bit more about putting together a children's book, what would you, t- do you have any like advice or any thoughts that you'd like to share with them about um, what challenges you had and uh, maybe some awesome tips for them as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, first of all, if you are inspired to write a kid's book or to write any book, just do it. And that was my thinking is I'm not getting any younger. Um, 
and I really wanted to put this message out there. I was so passionate about it after I had written it. Uh, and we researched self-publishing companies because in order to get into a big publishing company, you have to have an agent. And I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So we researched self-publishing companies and it was a lot of money. And I almost didn't put this book out there because I thought, oh my gosh, it, it, it can really add up. Um, so my husband and I sat down and we made a list of all the things that we were capable of doing and all the things that we would need help with. And we decided we would create our own publishing company. So Full Heart Publishing, and we only publish my books currently um, because we don't have the big overhead to, um, you know, to do other books. But we did everything ourselves. And as far as finding an illustrator, it's, it's a networking game. I just put the word out there, and it was friends who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody. Um, and it just kind of all came all came together. Um, and my thinking too, and so I want to encourage anybody, if you're thinking about putting a book out there, you don't want to put yourself into debt doing it. Um, so my, when, when we first did it, I thought, okay, if I could sell this many books, I would make my initial investment back. And if I never sell another book again, who cares? Because it was on my bucket list and that's exactly what I wanted to do. And we far exceeded that. So if you know that you can sell so many books to get your investment back, then by all means do it. I love that. That was mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Such great, great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, my last question for you is uh -huh. what do you love most about being an author? I love most that I get to go to events, to schools, to um, conferences, and tell people how much this world needs them. And I get to tell people how they were born because the world knew they would make a difference. I get to empower and inspire people. That's what I love most about doing this. Beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you. Amy, thanks again for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our awesome. listeners can find that. Our listeners can find that at SheWroteABook.com slash 107 to learn more about our author and her inspiring book. Thanks again, Amy. Lena, you are awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes. And feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments, too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.